According to Aristotle, all human beings desire to know. We are curious by nature, born with an insatiable drive to explore the horizon, to construct models of reality, and to strive to better understand our place in the universe. For most of us, science is an intrinsically rewarding endeavor that enriches our lives, broadens our minds, and deepens our appreciation for the majesty of the world in which we live. For others, science is just a way to make sure everyone knew who was the most hardcore motherfucker on the block. These people were born with an insatiable drive to make Mother Nature their bitch, bend reality to their diabolical will, and tear the universe a new asshole. This is a testament to the most fearless, most maniacal, most utterly and categorically insane minds in the history of empirical investigation. This is badasses in the history of science. By and large, scientists toil in obscurity. Their work is neither understood nor appreciated save by a small handful of like-minded specialists. Most scientists only add modest contributions to our understanding of the world in exchange for even more meager reward. But every so often, a scientist comes along who so thoroughly owns their field that they almost literally own their field. A scientist who can see what's in front of everyone's noses, but no one had noticed before. A man so much larger than life that his balls practically block out the sun. That was the case for Tycho Brahe, the biggest player the 16th century ever saw. And incidentally, he could strangle you with his mustache. Tycho Brahe is usually mentioned in passing, if at all, as a stepping stone between Copernicus, the first modern astronomer to propose the Earth revolves around the sun, and Galileo, the man who proved it. But for all their renown, Neither Copernicus nor Galileo murdered somebody before they were even born. You can't say the same about Tycho Brahe. Though his parents conceived twins, the pre-born Tycho apparently had other plans. While Tycho was perfectly healthy, his brother was stillborn, giving Tycho a body count before he even took his first breath. Understandably terrified that he might kill them next, Tycho's parents didn't object when his uncle, Jürgen Brahe, kidnapped the young hustler at the age of two. One hardcore scholar himself, Jürgen trained Tycho in the ways of law, medicine, and most importantly, how not to take shit from anybody. This last lesson was put to the test when, at the age of 20, Brahe got into a heated argument with his cousin over a math problem. Unable to convince his cousin how wrong he was, Brahe did what any reasonable mathematician would do. He challenged the man to a duel. As in, with motherfucking swords. It's also probably worth mentioning at this point that this occurred in the middle of the night. But Brahe wasn't about to let a little thing like the lack of visibility prevent him from threatening another man with lethal force over a question of computation. Right. It turns out that while Tycho's cousin may have been an inferior mathematician, he must have been some kind of samurai master, because the duel ended with Tycho's nose four feet from his face. But what to many at the time would have been a mortal wound, Brahe saw as a chance to sling some bling. He fashioned himself a prosthetic nose out of gold. Copper would have been both cheaper and more comfortable, but Tycho wasn't about to adorn his face with such a low-rent metal. It was 24 karat all the way, baby, because that's just how baller Brahe was. Realizing that sword fighting might not be his strong suit, Tycho turned his attention to the stars. After seeing a solar eclipse in 1560, Brahe threw all his efforts into astronomy. A few years later, at the age of 26, Brahe accurately predicted his own lunar eclipse, becoming the youngest person in history to do so. Since real progress in astronomy requires almost obsessive attention, Brahe watched the stars almost every single night. When Blaise Pascal stared too long into the night sky, he famously reported, The eternal silence of these infinite spaces fills me with dread. Tycho had no such reservations, and joyously stared into the abyss night after night 
after night. In his life, he cataloged over 1,000 stars, a greater number than any human being before him. And he did this with greater accuracy than anyone else, too, in part because he was the first person to recognize the phenomena of atmospheric refraction, where stars low on the horizon are displaced because their light is lensed by passing through the thicker atmosphere. Brahe literally taught other astronomers how to see straight. Because of his willingness to unblinkingly stare the universe in the face, Brahe became the first human being ever to witness a supernova, the birth of a star. This refuted once and for all Aristotle's claim that the heavens were eternal and unchanging, and earned Brahe shout-outs from both William Shakespeare and Edgar Allan Poe, among others, and making him the namesake for craters on both the moon and Mars. Oh yeah, and did I mention that Brahe died before the invention of the stellar telescope? That means he did all this with his bare-ass naked eyes, using the same tools that nearly all of you were born with and currently have lodged in your skull, Brahe revolutionized an entire field of science. While he rejected Copernicus's heliocentric system, he had solid empirical and mathematical reasons for doing so. His alternative system was, by the best standards available at the time, superior. While Galileo ultimately proved Brahe's system wrong, he never would have been able to do so without the painstaking cataloging Brahe did. Recognizing his tectonic brilliance, King Frederick of Denmark gave Brahe an entire freaking island and an effectively limitless budget to do with it whatever the hell he damn well pleased. Scientists today think they're hot shit if they get their own labs. Most would lose their shit if they had their own research institute. Tycho Brahe had the world's first and last scientific fiefdom. At the heart of the island, he built one of the grandest castles in all of Denmark, making Brahe the only scientist eligible for his own episode of Cribs. And damn did he pimp the place out. He hired hundreds of scientists, scribes, printers, and assistants to facilitate his plans for astronomical domination. With their assistance, Brahe developed more than two dozen new astronomical instruments, some of which were larger than a small house. As a result, the precision of astronomical measurement increased by more than an order of magnitude in less than a decade. But it wasn't just about the science. Tycho became notorious for hosting ridiculously over-the-top parties. Brahe turned that island into the preeminent observatory slash party pad in the Western Hemisphere. Basically, he became a Danish Jay Gatsby. Only, Gatsby never employed a clairvoyant dwarf as a court jester to entertain his guests. When he was done with the place, Brahe's island was worth almost 5% of the gross national product of Denmark. Relative to the net worth of his country, Brahe was probably the most well-funded scientist in the history of the world. And oh yeah, he had a pet moose. No shit, an honest-to-God pet moose for fuck's sake. Teddy Roosevelt may have ridden a moose, but my man Brahe tamed that son of a bitch and kept him around the house like he was a goddamn chihuahua. And as if this wasn't badass enough, Tycho actually challenged the moose to a drinking contest and won. I shit you not, at a party one night, in order to entertain his guests, Tycho and his moose started drinking beer and they didn't stop until the moose was stone cold fucking dead. Tycho, meanwhile, was still on his feet. Let me repeat that. In a drinking contest with a 700 kilogram animal, Brahe drank the beast to death. Tycho's own death is actually shrouded in mystery. For a long time, it was thought he died from a kidney stone. But realizing no bitch ass kidney stone could kill someone of such near godlike ability, researchers exhumed his body in 1901. The new autopsy suggested that the cause of death was likely poison. The exact source of the poison isn't clear, but one theory is that it was the result of the toxic chemicals from his prosthetic nose, making him the first scientific gangster to die for his bling. 
Another theory speculates that he was murdered by his assistant, Johannes Kepler, biggie to Tycho's Tupac. Kepler made no secret of his pleasure at Brahe's death. He inherited all of Brahe's data and used it to establish the three laws of planetary motion, which would later prove crucial in Galileo's work proving heliocentrism. Still another theory proposes that he was poisoned at the behest of the new king of Denmark because, and this much at least is almost certainly true, Brahe was nailing the king's mother like Jesus to the cross and he was doing it nightly. That's right, Tycho Brahe was literally a royal motherfucker and he loved it so much it may have gotten him killed. True or not, the rumor may have played a small part in inspiring another story about murder in the Dutch royal court, Hamlet. Shakespeare wrote the play in 1601, the same year that Brahe died. Whether it was the bling, the professional rivalry, or his paramour's petty progeny, it's fair to say few scientists have ever had such a baller death, or for that matter, such a play as life. And all that makes Tycho Brahe a certified badass in the history of science.